Um, okay, so question. First one's a uh, silly question. Um, so, uh, as we said, mostly picks and shovels. A couple of um, consumer products. And one that we, I didn't mention before is a product called detoxbox.io. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, my question around that is, uh, and the serious question now, is uh, I guess a lot of what you do is building relationships and stuff like that. We said that before. Uh, and then now, in today's world, that's obviously mostly online. Or a portion of it's online. And that's using social media and stuff like that. I guess what's your thoughts around uh, have you what's your thoughts around balancing using it as a tool social media sort of using it as a tool to to meet people you know connect with us which was awesome and stuff like that and actually it just sort of controlling your life a little bit too much because I think it's something everyone deals with and it's something that you have like you don't have any choice but to use these platforms and meet people and stuff have you got any tips or any thoughts around that concept Yeah it's it's an interesting conversation having just taken a week offline uh in january um yeah right. on Rye island in queensland and being you know completely offline um oh, wow. i think um for me um this sort of comes in ebbs and flows like i know it's a tool that i need yeah. to be present on and engage with it's not just being present it's actually engaging which to be clear is pretty tiring um however without it I wouldn't be where I am. So it is, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a bit of a love hate thing because, yeah. you know, engagement requires time and time you need to choose where you get it from and what you're not doing when you are doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, I have this conversation with my wife all the time, like yeah. what happens when I don't need it as a tool anymore? So, yeah. you know, if I pop out, if I, in five years time, I don't need, you know, I don't need to yeah. talk to founders all day long anymore because that's not what I do. Yeah. Like, am I still there? I don't know. I mean, I really enjoyed being offline and not having the burden yeah. of having to stay on, you stay current. Yeah. Um, I, I do, however, think it does democratize access. Like yeah. I talk to some really, really interesting people. Yeah. You know, I have lots of conversations with billionaires because, yeah. you know, I, I've done enough engagement with them at a respectful level so that when you ask them a question, they'll give you an answer. Like yeah. you can't walk up to these people in the street and do that. So, you know, there's a, there's an argument there that if if you want to learn a bunch of stuff, it's really good. You need to filter pretty heavily and remove the noise. Um, yeah. And, you know, also be mindful that the signal that you double down on yeah. will be the signal that you start identifying with. So just be careful, yeah. right? Like just yeah. you really need to be careful about, about who you do that. And, I mean, I got into investing because I decided one day, like, oh, I think I want to be an investor. How do I do that? I'll follow a bunch of investors when they say stuff i ask some questions and become curious and become curious with i got enough background so you're not asking numpty questions all the time and you're trying to add a little bit of value and ask a question at the same time yeah and you know i engage with all kinds of people who ask me lots of questions and stuff and i i try and keep it positive i've certainly removed a bunch of negative negative people from my list and stuff like that so i think it's really important to 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 come back to your question like you need to master it Um, otherwise it will master you and yeah. it won't be fun. Yeah, that's right. And I guess that awareness is is the first step to doing that. Um, so you said you had a, like a week off the grid. Is that like a is that like a Bill's Think Week sort of thing? Is that I've done that is before. That, uh, yeah, I did yeah. do that um, uh, before I started Tractor, which was delightful. Um, ah, okay. No, this one was our um, 20th wedding anniversary. So, oh, uh, congrats. Amazing. We went to an island off Townsville in Queensland yeah. um, and it was just delightful. Yeah, right. Okay, crazy. So, yeah, okay, that's a good point. So, we noticed that um, when you finished at AWS, which is sort of like mid to late um, 2019, mm-hmm. there's sort of a period of time where there's it's sort of there's not a, th- a thousand things happening like the rest of mm-hmm. your life. And so, yeah, it, was that a moment of thought? Obviously, COVID's happening. You know, you're locked down for 120 days or whatever in Melbourne. And um, is was that a moment of just like reconsidering values and, and what's important and what you want to do? Is that what happened there? So, yeah, it correlated with... A couple of um, exits correlated with some 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 returns on our investment, um, yeah. which we were lucky enough to be able to, um, you know, not have to earn the Bezos bucks um, for yeah. for a while. Yeah, it's awesome. Which gave me enough time to sit on the couch and consider what's next. Um, and I did that, and then COVID came along, and um, I just started yelling at people on Twitter from doing dumb shit. And not taking it seriously, um, which made April go like, "You've got to find something to do. Like, you can't just yell at people on Twitter all day long." Um, <laughs> uh, and and um, you know, track adventures or pick and shovel adventures, as it was back then, yeah. was something that um, I'd been thinking about for a long time. 
it actually existed prior to my job at AWS. So I was trying to build a fund called Pick and Shovel Ventures oh, right. with a couple of mates of mine. Uh, we realized that we were, none of us were in a position to run a small fund because with small fund becomes small fees and small fees is small <laughs> salaries and we had families and mortgages and things like that. So we're like, oh, that ain't going to work. So yeah. one of them went off to Bill Kite and the other one came with me to AWS and we sort of spent two or three years doing that and now we're off doing other stuff. But, um, um, yeah, the, the time there was, as I said, um, lucky enough to not have to um, pay the bills for a while and, yeah. and take some time out. And it's probably the first time, as you can see from my LinkedIn, that I'd stopped for yeah. about 20 yeah, five really years. Yeah, I it. Yeah. And um, it, it takes stock. Of, and, and, you know, at that point, I guess I was in my early 40s um, and figuring out whether or not I can just sustain that pace for a long time. And the answer is yeah. I don't think I can. No. Nah. So how do I optimize for fewer better yeah. is, is sort of where I ended up. So That's how do I do fewer things yeah, it's not. but be more impactful with them, yeah. um, which I've managed to do now. You know, I don't do a lot of advisory. I only do – there's only a hand. There's like – there's a handful of things I do today. Yeah. And I think I do them much better than how do I spread myself too thin prior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>